Hey guys, Born with Day here. Today we're back in uh, videos in general. Uh, hi guys, I've been gone for quite some time now. Uh, we're back in Gmod, not Minecraft. I'm sorry, there's nobody on. <laughs> it's a awfully slow Sunday. But um, to explain my absence, I really don't have much of an explanation. I mean, for a short period of time, I was out of the state, and then this past week, I've had, you know, on and off headaches and right now even I still have a sore throat so bear with me because talking does not feel nice so yeah that, that's partial explanation for my absence but I also really didn't feel like making videos recently but you know that phase is mostly over you'll still like videos are gonna pick back up speed it's gonna be a while though you're getting this one for now and uh, I'll post some more later still in my PJs and it's freaking four o'clock <laughs> anyways so what I wanted to show you today if you can't read titles is um I have made a new vehicle in Gmod but uh more specifically it uses a new kind of base that I've been really excited about making and it is completely perfectly portrayed in this vehicle right here which is one what I'm showcasing this is more of like a test bed but where you can see here is a uh, pseudo torsion bar suspension. I say pseudo torsion bar because it looks like a torsion bar. It acts like a torsion. It acts like a torsion bar, but it's not because it uses hydraulics that are connected somewhere around here. But hey, you know, it's a step in the right direction, I'd say. If we go in here, this is like just an armor personnel carrier that, well, <laughs> it's never gonna really be used. I was just like, hey, suspension. Oh, gosh, how? We'll do good on a vehicle like this. But you can see, it's perfect. Well, not perfect. It's still got some bugs to work out, but all in all, it does a pretty decent job. I'm on the map Baharama, or Baharama. I don't know how to say it properly. Maybe I am saying it properly, I just don't know. But yeah, Baharama, I'm using this to test my suspension, really. And as you can see, everything works fine. This is a very light vehicle, so it only needs one hydraulic. The vehicle I'm going to show you in a little bit, which is actually the main showcase of this video, by the way, um, is a lot heavier and therefore actually has two hydraulics per wheel. So it took a lot longer to set up. Because you wouldn't believe how painful it is to set up hydraulics. But yeah, I'm just like really showcasing suspensions here. Because that's what I've really been excited about, getting suspension to work. It actually works off of three different constraints from the wheel to the bar. The wheel gets access to the bar, access center, and then ball socketed to the base. So it doesn't get like all wobbly and crap. And the bar itself is just access to the base and has a similar weight to the wheel. Now if there's any way, a better way of doing this, I do not know. I tried multiple other ways, but it took me days to actually get this working properly. I think I actually got my first working torsion bar when I was out of the state. I had a laptop with me. Um, played Gmod when I was back at the hotel. We were in Virginia. But yeah, this thing works off of two i3s, but that's not or i4s, I don't know. But that's not really important. What's important is torsion bar suspension, more or less. And I think it's really cool. So I'm going to bring this thing back to the garage. And this thing handles decently well of terrain. It's not a climber, though. Uh, diesel engines that are not powerful enough. I had an experimental version with an I-12, but, like, never actually duped it. So <laughs> that's why I'm not using it. So let me head back to the garage. This thing had a few problems in its uh, beta stages. Namely, um, it's why I had to use a bicycle socket also, but, um... The wheels would go up and over and just stick in like the worst possible position. Oh yeah, see this thing can't climb. But they go up and over and stick in the worst possible position and you know just sit there. So at that point it wasn't really a torsion bar, it became just like, oh, can't drive, fun. Come on, make it over, ah whatever. Point is, perfect showcase of the suspension I'd think. Oop. Constraints are a little weaker, you know, because three different constraints, but hey, it works, it stays, I like it. Can't remove this thing because I spawned something else. God dang it, I'm stupid. 
Anyways, time to go to the main showcase. It's already five minutes in, and I've, like, just procrastinated on torsion bars. Anyways, if we go into here, this is my latest project. I literally finished this last night. Actually, it's not even really finished, but this is the R HRP 55 medium tank. It, well, okay, I'll give some stats, but right now, you may be wondering what's going on with the suspension, why it's all limp. Well, if I get in, it'll start, like, actually peeping up. But right now, if I were to give some basic stats, this thing has three headlamps, right? You know, one on the turret and two on the body. It has a 100 millimeter short barreled cannon on the front. Also, if you see that little flap, I'll put like a circle over in the screen. It, it goes with the gun, it's pretty cool. Uh, I figured that one out. It's got a 50 caliber machine gun on the top. Because, you know, need a machine gun. Um, it's got quite a bit of armor. As you can see, I've made like a hemispherical turret, or sort of. It took a long time and I was surprised I could do it at all, even with S props. Um, what else? It's got, okay, so frontal armor, 120 millimeters, sloped back at X degrees. I didn't actually, like, record the degrees. Side armor, this is actually 85 millimeters thick up here, but it's 70 down there. And 50 millimeters of rear armor, 35 millimeters of top armor, and that's the same on the turret, but, um, on the turret there's, like, 150 millimeters. Right, 150, is that what I said it to? No, 175, so... Like, the front of the turret, impenetrable. Over here, hopefully you're keeping the gun up to the enemy, so it's like, ricochet all the time. It's got an interesting turret design back here. Kind of like a T-54 mod. Well, that's because there's ammunition. It runs off of a very large V-8 diesel engine, 19 liter. And gas tanks as well. Uh, we got a lot of short barreled ammunition in here because, well, darn. Uh, that ammunition is big, so... This is like a matchbox here, and, uh, well, there's a lot of chips controlling this thing, including Red's track chip, also automatic gearing, because I just really got bored of gearing this thing constantly, and, uh, yeah, this is machine gun ammo, <laughs> anyways, mm, there's a four-speed transmission in here, but you're not here really to see the, uh, you know, the tank's working components, although I'll do some firing tests later, this thing, not much of a speed demon. It's definitely not as speedy as the Hellcat. Which, by the way, working on giving the Hellcat a suspension, which is why it's not been showcased yet. I actually made this thing after the Hellcat a lot. Uh, wheel material is metal. I actually used rubber for a bit, but um, rubber is a lot more grippy, obviously. But it has complications with tank steering. So I decided, you know what, forget about it. I'm just going to give it a good old metal t uh, wheels to simulate tracks and well voila it turns a lot better so as you can see the suspension is at work down there it uses the same well not the same exact but a similar torsion bar design as that uh, armored personnel carrier I showed you guys earlier it's much faster than that armored personnel carrier um, more or less it struggles on turns a little bit and the turret does wobble a little bit I don't know what's going on there but <laughs> whatever now the real thing you gotta worry about with a torsion bar suspension like this one is weighting of the vehicle. This thing weighs around, I th I'd say, 28 tons, which is actually not bad for a medium tank. Um, actually, I'd classify this as a lightweight medium with a really big gun. <laughs> By the way, it fires heat ammunition with a 170 millimeters of penetration about. Lovely. I changed it. the sounds too. I changed the sounds for a lot of things. Yeah, that's all I can really showcase. Uh, Speed-wise, this thing is a bit of a climber, and that's great. It's because of the diesel engine. I'll showcase it when the time comes over there. I'm going to like drive around the track and talk about it a bit. The process of making this vehicle... Okay, let's put it this way. I love remodeling the historical vehicles. That's why I have Hellcats and Shermans and all that kind of mumbo-jumbo. But um, I decided... I kind of wanted a, like a T-54, but I didn't want to remodel a T-54 because I knew that was going to be like a task and a half, especially with a hemispherical turret, which I actually made, so I guess that really wouldn't have been an obstacle. But hey, <laughs> whatever. Torsion bar still will work there. Oh, it's lovely to see this thing in action. I keep getting distracted. Also, the lights. 
one follows the turret so you can like look in a direction great on night maps anywho so I, I kind of wanted like a t54 kind of thing but at the same time I didn't like want to remodel it entirely I wanted to have my own kind of spin on it you could probably already see that this thing looks a ton like a t54 t55 whatever it's slightly smaller but not much smaller it's got a short cannon instead of a long one because the short cannon weighs like half the long one so I was like hey if I want suspension to work I might want to keep the weight down I decided to put a machine gun up there because <laughs> machine gun gotta be good against infantry here's what the distortion bar really shows great isn't it <sighs> if you guys want a tutorial on how to make a suspension like this I'd be happy to um it it what it, it took me a long time to figure out how to do it but like the process isn't actually that hard it was just basically figuring out like the right set of constraints to use along with like the hydraulic settings and stuff like that but, like the moment you get it down you're golden you can make tons of these things like I can probably pump out another suspension a good what 20 minutes I mean most of the time is like tedium because you've got a lot of wiring to do constant values in the sort oh mother this thing does climb going up this hill it's at gear one right now which has a very small ratio I originally tested this thing on an actual vehicle testing map which had much larger hills now when the full body was completed it lost a bit of climbing ability because this thing went from weighing 5 tons to 20 tons as you can imagine I figured out parented props actually don't affect the um, suspension much which is good news which means I could actually give this thing a lot more armor but in you know part of making it not op I decided not to and in part because well it actually affected the engine's performance instead which is why it had trouble climbing after the body was finished so yeah you see it climbs these hills perfectly fine just has a little speed issue with them but you know naturally I'm just gonna like deviate off the course now because you've seen plenty now I chose a short cannon over the long cannon I think I already explained this but because the long cannons weighed a ton more I think literally one ton more which you know was not ideal for the suspension load because like it drooped a ton more so I was just like yeah no I'd prefer to not touch the ground with my body so there's that fires high explosive anti-tank ammunition again I think I went through that I chose high explosive anti-tank because I knew armor piercing rounds and HE round well why would I use HE uh, APHE rounds they were going to be short cannons have lower muzzle velocity let's just put it that way so a heat round is your best bet for something short it is less accurate because short cannon but less accurate is relative because that's still accurate <laughs> and of course machine gun it, who cares about the machine gun stats 14 millimeters of penetration that can get through the Hellcat and that's all yeah the Hellcat only has 12 millimeters of armor so you know again I'll showcase the Hellcat when you know that um, is necessary when I've actually installed a suspension onto that thing which is really what I care about actually right now I think I am going to do a little speed test I want to know how fast this thing does go I never did figure that one out I think I'm willing to bet 30 miles per hour is its top and that would be its top so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna make that my bet alright let me just remove the vehicles yes you play subnautica snake eater <laughs> Oof, sorry, I just had a lot of Pepsi. <laughs> I am not sponsored by Pepsi, I swear. Anyways, uh, screen. Watch me mess up the same way I always do. I want something big. Also, this will be a pretty good indicator of, like, the, uh, the gearing with the gearbox. Eh. Why am I multi-parenting? Okay. That almost ended very badly. And this. 
Look how many wire things are down here. Oh boy, I, I went, I went way too far with this. Uh, yes. Now, because we are metric friendly here, I'm gonna put kilometers an hour for speed, and gear will be gear. If you guys want to see miles per hour, I'm just gonna edit in like a little, you know, conversion. But anyways, there's that. This thing is not a gear. Well, we're on kilometers. There we go. So gear one is reverse gear. That's oh, oh, oh wait, that's kilometers. <laughs> Thirty-five kilometers. That's actually pretty slow. I was hoping for a lot faster. And then again, that's not really my full potential. So let me see it again while going downhill. I might want to give this thing a new engine, although the one in there is already big enough. So my true top speed is 38 kilometers an hour. Alright, I'll do a conversion and post that in like the video's editing process, but currently 38 kilometers if, you know, getting a halo head start. Looks like 36 if you're just on flat ground. And that's with fuel tanks, so I don't want to see this thing without them. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, just, I'm going to do a quick little, you know, vulnerability showcase. Now, there's a few things to work out with this vehicle. Like, it doesn't have reverse yet. Well, I mean, it does, but it's, like, temporary. Let me just stop this thing here, and I just want to demonstrate the power of the gun before I uh, say my farewells. So, oh, and I'm actually going to showcase its... Uh, What's something with armor? I want to showcase its... Oh, God, what was I going to say? <laughs> I want to showcase its survivability. That's what it was. Durability, stuff like that. So there is the major drawback with high-explosive anti-tank shells. It is horrible against spaced armor, and a wheel counts as spaced armor. So, yeah. It hit right on this thing, which is why it did not destroy that giant obvious ammo box inside the KV-2. So the suspension droop with the HRP-55, just don't worry about that. It's not a problem. So, right at the front, did it do anything? Doesn't look like it. Let me shoot it. Oh, there it goes. I see the uh, hole. Come on. I need a handbrake on this thing. Parking brake of sorts. Ah, that should hit. Um. ACF, are you broken? Okay, let's try there. Why you do this to me, ACF? Where are these shots hitting? They're certainly going through. Even this one went through. Oh, it's getting... Okay. Yeah, oh, uh, I'm just not placing my shots correctly. I need to hit here. So there's a little bit of inaccuracy there. You can obviously see. I guess if this thing's ammo doesn't explode. So, you gotta be picky with HE at anti tank. High explosive anti tank. Um, heat rounds. You gotta be very careful with, obviously, because they do only, like, fire their explosives in a straight line to penetrate. And wait, what? Huh. I guess the ammo box was damaged but never got destroyed. So. Survivability. It took one direct hit from a 155mm howitzer loaded with HE rounds and a whole ton of explosive had it do. Well, 
Obviously, I upped the duct ductility on this thing. The gun was somewhat damaged, nothing major. A lot of overall spread damage. The ammunition, perfectly fine. Stowed decently well behind all the ductility. It is meant to resist HE shells, but at the same time, it doesn't have too high ductility that it, like, can get penetrated by anything. So yeah, I think that's all I really need to showcase with this guy. I'll be showing my Hellcat at some point. If you want a copy of this, a link is in the description. I'm, I'm not even going to do it by request this time. I'm just going to put it there. And yeah, I think that's all about it. So, <laughs> hey, I'm back, everybody. Uh, although, uploads will be few and far between for a little bit, like every weekend, maybe. So yeah, I'll see you all some other time. All right. Goodbye. By the way, look, that's what the Hellcat looks like. <laughs>